Saint Jose Maria Escrivá, founder of Opus Dei, is one of the giants of the 21st century. His canonization in Rome in 2002, presided over by Saint John Paul II, was one of the biggest events to ever take place in the Eternal City. So many people from all walks of life, from all over the world, came to participate in the ceremony. I ended up standing for more than four hours at the very end of Via Conciliazione, and I was there almost at the foot of Castel Sant'Angelo. But at the moment of the consecration, when St. John Paul II raised our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, there was a deeply reverent total silence in the whole square. We could hear the ringing of the bells and the chiming of the clock something many people say you don't get to hear often because of the thousands of people that come and go. There was just no way of being able to hear the hourly chime of the clock. But on that day, it could be heard. And that just about summarizes the great impact of this modern saint. First, a gathering of people from all walks of life, from the five continents, of all colors, races, and languages. Second, a deep love for our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, born out of a deep knowledge and understanding of the faith. And third, a passionate unity with the Vicar of Christ, the Pope, the Holy Father, lovingly referred to by Saint Jose Maria as the sweet Christ on earth. Saint Jose Maria was born in 1902 and at the age of 27, he started Opus Dei, Latin for work of God, which in the beginning, in fact, he did not want to give any name until one bishop one day asked him, Jose Maria, how is that work of God doing? And that's when he thought, that's a nice name, Opus Dei. Now it is a personal prelature of the Catholic Church, whose main message is the sanctification of ordinary life. To the Opus Dei, St. Jose Maria preached tirelessly that everyone, everyone is called to holiness, that sanctity is for all. Priests, religious, lay people, ordinary men and women in the middle of the world. An idea that would later be enshrined in the Second Vatican Council documents as the universal call. To holiness. No wonder some people thought Saint Jose Maria was ahead of his time. At the time of his death in 1975, he left behind more than 60,000 members of Opus Dei in 30 nations and hundreds and thousands more receiving formation from Opus Dei activities everywhere. That is not exactly um, an ordinary feat, considering that these are more than 60,000 men and women, young and old, from all social and economic backgrounds who commit themselves to attend Mass every day, receive communion every day, say the rosary every day, spend an hour in prayer every day, 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon, do apostolate, develop a tender, loving devotion to the Mother of God, go to weekly confession, and do everything they can to convert their everyday ordinary work into a means of loving God. In short, to turn their ordinary work into prayer, an occasion of loving and serving God. No wonder St. John Paul II referred to him as the saint of the ordinary. St. Jose Maria preached that tirelessly, that we don't have to do extraordinary things to become holy. We just have to turn everything that we do into an occasion of loving and pleasing God. In short, turning everything into prayer, even sleep. I was introduced to St. Jose Maria to do his most popular book when I was a freshman high school student, a small book that contains 999 points for reflection entitled The Way. It's a fantastic book which has sold almost 5 million copies and translated into 43 languages. And I remember a classmate of mine passing on to me that book and I went through it 
and it was just so powerful. The very first point was so powerful, I would have to admit, it must have affected me greatly as it did many others. It goes, don't let your life be barren. Be useful. Make yourself felt. Shine forth with a torch of your faith and your love. In another book with many points for meditation, he talks about the task for a Christian is to drown evil in an abundance of good. And this is what members of Opus Dei have been doing everywhere. Members of Opus Dei, very few of them are priests, less than 2%. Majority are married members who try to sanctify themselves at home in their work, in their families. And then there are celibate members who take care of the activities of centers of Opus Dei. And they are in charge of giving formation to the other members. Well, I would say it is a very powerful message that affected me greatly, which I think is one of the main reasons that prompted me to get into what I'm doing now, going around the Philippines, giving seminars to teachers, parents, community leaders, students, championing character formation. I remember getting into a project with my students. It's called Catalyst of the University of Asia and the Pacific. And our idea is young people, without waiting until they're professionals, can make a difference in society. And so one day we were told that uh, Jason Everett was going to come to the Philippines and that he's one of the world's most renowned speakers on chastity. And the members of Catalyst, the student leaders, said, well, let's not just go for 10, 20, 100. Let's go for thousands of young people listening to the message of the beauty of chastity, the beauty of purity, and how wonderful it is if they keep themselves chaste and pure. And I guess that's an example of the kind of influence Saint Jose Maria had on us. We were very clear that we were not just meant to do ordinary things, that we have to drown evil in an abundance of good. And I guess that was also the inspiration for my getting into starting a school, Westbridge, in a province in the Philippines. I was very fortunate to have graduated from a high school run by members of Opus Dei. It's called Paref Southridge School. Paref stands for Parents for Education Foundation. And the people who set it up were inspired by the message precisely of Saint Jose Maria that the parents are the primary educators of the children. Family is where we should learn virtues life of prayer, love for God, and the most important things. And such is the message of Saint Jose Maria, that we have to strive to be saints where we are, where God has put us. Surely the members of Opus Dei must have picked up very clearly the message of Saint Jose Maria of drowning evil in an abundance of good. And throughout the world, Opus Dei members have started so many initiatives to be able to address concerns like poverty. Here in the Philippines, for example, we have projects that are really doing a great deal of good to young people who otherwise would not have opportunities in life. And so there are the technical schools, for example, that have been transforming lives helping young people to prepare themselves better and be able to give a better life for their families. SIGHT in Cebu, Dual Tech here in Laguna, Anihan also in Laguna, family farm schools, and so many others. And then there are the schools that are forming young people to not just be smart, but especially to be good championing character and values formation. 
throughout their stay in the high schools. And I cannot forget how we were reminded very frequently about the need to strive to be good, to practice the virtues. And then there is also the University of Asia in the Pacific. And all these in the Philippines are just a few of the so many initiatives throughout the world that have been started, inspired by the teachings of Saint Jose Maria because of the encouragement of Saint Jose Maria that we have to drown evil in an abundance of good. And then we talked earlier about the need to have a deep appreciation and deep love for the faith. And Saint Jose Maria many times referred to Opus Dei as a great catechesis. He insisted on the members and those who attend means of formation in the different centers to grow in their understanding of the faith. So those are among the most important points we can get from St. Jose Maria's writings and preachings that desire to have a deep understanding of the Catholic faith, love for the church, love and unity for the Holy Father, the Pope, and then to develop a deep, genuine filial devotion to the Blessed Mother, Our Lady, as he would fondly refer to her, and then to live a sacramental life, especially falling in love with the sacrament of confession and Holy Eucharist. And that morning on October 2, 2002, as St. John Paul II raised him to the altars to be counted among the saints, it was a very clear manifestation of the kind of legacy that St. Jose Maria left behind. A legacy of a big generation of people who know how to love the Holy Eucharist, to have a deep, genuine love for our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, and then that eager desire to be able to spread that fire of love for God to do apostolate. This is St. Jose Maria, who has a very timely message for us modern people, for us in modern times, now that we find ourselves in this lifestyle where people work and work so hard to have a better life. The message of Opus Dei, of sanctifying ordinary work, of turning our work into a means of loving and pleasing God is a very timely message for us. And so we have a good example here of how it is to struggle to become saints ourselves. Saint Jose Maria has had a very good record. His successor, Blessed Alvaro del Portillo, was beatified by the Catholic Church. And even more recently, one of the lay women members was beatified, Blessed Guadalupe Ortiz de Landazuri. And there are many more members whose processes of beatification and canonization are underway. Venerable Isidoro Zorzano, Venerable Monse Graces, Ernesto Cofino, Jose Maria Hernandez Garnica, Tony Zweifel, Tomas Alvira and Paquita Dominguez, and Canita Ortega Pardo, Dora Del Hoyo, Father Joseph Musquiz, and many more. This just shows us that his formula works. The formula that is Opus Dei, the spirit of Opus Dei, which is the greatest legacy of St. Jose Maria Escriva. And so may his life and teachings be a reminder for us, people of the modern times, to, to strive for sanctity, as St. Jose Maria repeatedly preached, that we too are called to be saints, to be holy, where we are by doing our work well, by doing our ordinary duties with faith. In the last years of his life, Saint Jose Maria spent a lot of time going around the world, reaching out to people from 1970 to 1975. It was a time of crisis in the church. There were many abuses because of wrong interpretations of the Second Vatican Council, and there were difficulties. To address the difficulties, he showed us by his life, by his example, 
what it means to drown evil in an abundance of good. He spent his last five years going around the world, reaching out to people. Sometimes he would speak to a group of 10, 20 in a room, sometimes to as many as 500, 2,000, 6,000 in an auditorium. At one point, he was even speaking to 20,000 in the football field of the University of Navarre in Pamplona, Spain. And in all those occasions, talking only about Jesus, talking about loving Our Lady, saying the rosary, frequenting confession, going to communion, going to daily mass. All these he did as his contribution to the drowning of evil in an abundance of good. And he spent his life giving himself generously, tirelessly in the service of the church. His process of beatification and canonization can be considered as one of the most thorough in the history of the church. The people in the congregation had to read volumes of works, testimonies from so many people who lived with him, and more than that, because he was probably one of the first saints to be captured in video, the congregation had to watch hours and hours and hours of filmed get-togethers, they called them, where he would be speaking to a crowd of people, talking about God, exhorting them to do apostolate, to pray the rosary, to frequent the sacraments, to go to communion, to go to confession, talking about St. Joseph, love for the Holy Father, love for the Pope, love for the Church. He spent his last years giving himself totally to the Church, spreading good doctrine, fighting ignorance, and to make sure people hear the message of sanctification of ordinary life. That is St. Jose Maria.